You're watching the Big 12 on ESPN. Happy Leap Day, everyone, and welcome to the Lloyd Noble Center on the campus of the University of Oklahoma for our live ESPNU coverage of women's collegiate gymnastics. Today, we feature the top-ranked Oklahoma Sooners as they welcome the sixth-ranked Denver Pioneers. I'm Bart Connor, along with Kathy Johnson-Clark. Now, Denver is led by Maddie Carr, currently ranked number three in the nation in the all-around. But in the last couple of weeks, Denver lost a couple of key gymnasts, including Lindsey Brown and Mia Sundstrom, to injury. And that's a big blow to this team. But the good thing for Denver is they started this season so strong, putting up great team scores that will buy them some time for those who suddenly need to step up and into lineups to settle, and for the regulars to not try too hard. And today, for the number one Oklahoma Sooners, we'll, of course, see Maggie Nichols, the two-time NCAA All-Around champion. But last week, she tweaked her ankle, so we're not quite sure how many events she will compete in today. Well, Maggie Nichols is not just a special talent. She is so resilient. She wants to compete on all four events. They're just going to play it by ear. Talk about Oklahoma on the vault. They're the number one team in the country there, and that has a lot to do with the fact that they do six 10.0 start value vaults. This first event for Oklahoma could be through the route. They're ranked number one. As you said, they're going to do all 10.0 start value vaults, but more than that, they do big vaults, big explosive really really high far from the table they set it up so beautifully that they often stick these very di difficult balls the coaches have the ability to change the lineups even as the competition is underway we may have a change in the lineup here in the first event it looks like reagan smith is going to get the call the young freshman how exciting is this She's only done the all-around a couple of times this year for the Oklahoma Sooners. We didn't have her originally in the vault lineup. Olivia Troutman was going to lead off for the Sooners. And Reagan Smith gets the call. So this is an exciting way to start our competition. Very exciting. She's going to do a, a 995 start value, a Yurchenko full. This just shows the depth of this Oklahoma team. They can make these last-minute decisions for the good of the team, for the good of the individual athletes. She's only been in the, in the vault in three meets. Her season high is a 9-8. So that means that this, in this case today, the Sooners will be putting up five 10-0 vaults instead of six as they have done in the last couple of weeks. And Reagan is a very special competitor as well. She can dial this in and focus. A very solid start, great distance from the table. She had a little bit of a pipe in her hips throughout. So that's a slight deduction and of course, the hop on the landing. Judges look for form with legs together throughout the entire vault is what they're looking for. And of course, the all important landing with no movement would be ideal. In dual meet competition, we go back and forth. So the visiting Denver Pioneers will start on bars with Alexandra, Alexandria Ruiz, the sophomore. Now her single bar release move comes up right off the bat, out of this full pirouette, into a tacha. So nice height. Judges need to see those handstands in perfectly vertical position. the flow of this routine nice and smooth effortless you never want to see a gymnast working too hard on this event look at that almost got a perfect landing the coaching staff really impressed with alexandria ruiz in fact melissa kutcher reinhardt has been in charge of that program for 22 years and she's done a superb job with that small private school at denver and uh of course, as we mentioned at the top of the show, she's out with a couple of her stars. About a quarter of their scores of 9-9 or better are out with injuries with Lindsey Brown and Mia Sundstrom. So she's very impressed with the character of these young ladies as they're stepping up here. First look at one and a half twist, 10-0 start value. Little off center, it looks like you want to land right in a direct line with the table. That, of course, is Allie Stern, the sophomore from Charlotte, North Carolina. Very nice form. What I like to see from Oklahoma is how they really keep their legs together, even on the pre-flight and throughout the block. 
Eastern, competed in all nine meets for the Sooners this year, season high 9975. Score is in for Alexandria Ruiz. It's a 9.85. Good start for the visiting Denver Pioneers. And this is AK Subject, the freshman from Minnesota. Starts off with a transition skill, release from the low bar to the high, a little bit of leg separation. Oh, short on that pass to handstand. Really need to get a little bit more on top of the bar and took the double layout just a little bit out too far, so couldn't quite manage a stick. Twice this year, she scored 9-9 nine, nine on bars. So these transition skills give them the bonus point. That's called a Maloney. It's from the toe on. Hit a good vertical position on her bail to handstand. And this layout, double layout came out a little too far toward us as we're looking at it on your television screen, so she couldn't quite keep those feet still on the landing. Getting set to go for the Sooners is Jade Degovea, the senior from Florida. She is currently ranked 10th in the nation on this event. And she is having the best year of her career in every way. Huge improvement <laughs> on all four events. Look at the distance that she just got on that vault and, and very good height to go with it. Five times she's been 9-9 nine, nine or better. Her season high was a 9-9-7-5. Nine, nine, she gets really nice block. Good lift off the table. Four and a half feet above. But check out the distance. Nine feet from the table. Just that side step on the landing. Back to bars now for Denver. Second 9-8-5 in a row. Solid for the Pioneers. Amori Lockhart now, the freshman from Fort Worth, Texas, set to go. She just joined the team in December. She's very dynamic on this. Oh, oh. no. I thought that was mm. going to go way too far. Just really mistimed the position of the, lead, of the release. So five-tenths of a point off for the fall. Now, she may repeat this go. just completely rush it did mm. not finish the toe on to get the complete benefit of this circle swing around the bar so it took her away from the bar instead of straight up and in, in the right position to regress the athletes have 45 seconds from when they touch the floor to them getting off the floor and back onto the apparatus to continue their exercise and they'll incur that deduction. Let's see if she's gonna go for it again. She's going to, she needs the skill nice. for her start value. You wanna start from the, oh no, she's struggling here on the cast and handstand, a little leg separation to low. And the double layout little short of rotation but good for her to get back up this is a young gymnast with not a lot of experience to be able to just restart the entire routine well done our full day of college basketball is highlighted tonight by these two games at six eastern it's a sonic blockbuster with number seven duke taking on virginia then ninth ranked maryland hosts number 24 michigan state both games are on espn and the espn app so you can watch anywhere Beautiful day here in Norman, Oklahoma. We're in the first rotation, and this is Anastasia Webb for the Sooners. And number two on this event. Big, beautiful. Oh, too bad it was so nice in the air. Just got a little bit of a, ahead of herself. Started thinking about the landing. Update on the scores for the Sooners: a 9.85 for Reagan Smith, Ali Stern a 9.875, Jade Degovea a 9.95. There was so much good technically in this ball. She just started thinking stick before she really blasted her biggest best ball. Emily Glynn will be next up for Denver, the junior from Colorado. You see her season average there, what they call the NQS. This is the first week we're using the NQF, the national qualifying score. We'll give you some detail on how that is calculated a little bit later in the show. But in the meantime, Kathy, how about some points of emphasis the judges are looking for on the bar? Well, as I mentioned, those handstands really need to be in vertical, but not just vertical. Perfectly straight, 
line from hands to toes, and the releases look for the single bar and transition releases from bar to bar. And the level of difficulty, amplitude on the dismount, and of course that landing. Really looking to see those stuck landings. The judges are huddled over there on the uneven bar mat. They are discussing, obviously, when there's a missed element that affects the start value, there's execution deductions. It's a good chance for us to remind you of the collegiate gymnastics rules in dual meet competition. There's six athletes on each team on each event. The best five scores on that event count towards the team total. And the home order, as we have already seen, the home team goes vault bars, beam, and floor. And the visiting team starts on the bars and vault floor and they finish on the beam. And as, as you were watching this, you could see Maddie Carr step in to be the leader. She is to keep Emily Glenn just relaxed, to be normal. Emily was terrific last week as the team struggled. She's so grounded and confident. They need a reset routine right here. Denver was fourth in the NCAA championship last year, their highest finish ever, and this year, really cruising until a couple of weeks ago when they lost Lindsey Brown and Mia Sundstrom. Amori Lockhart scores in now. It's a 9.025, and here is Emily Glenn. And here's a situation where you can't try to do too much. Be normal. Be yourself. So far, very smooth. And it's, oh, oh, good save. Very good save. She was really attacking that handstand position and just slightly overdid it. Nice to see her not hold back at all after almost going over on the first handstand. Half in, half out. Fought for the landing. Three times this year, she scored 9-9 nine, nine on uneven bars. She's been in all eight meets, vault, bars, and floor for Denver. It's so nice to see an athlete really fight through everything. She was being so aggressive on this handstand, just went a little bit too far. She'll get a deduction for that arch in the back, but dialed everything right back in, fought so hard to try to glue those feet to the mat on the landing. Now the Sooners, this is Olivia Troutman. She's been moved to fifth spot in the lineup. Oh, Big, beautiful nice. ball and the stuff <laughs> landing. Oh, yeah. I think that's two weeks in a row. It is. Lou Ball is responsible for their great work on the vault. And she stuck a vault last week at the Perfect 10 Challenge and scored a perfect 10. Well, I'll tell you what. I, I can now share it. She stuck every single vault that I saw in the warm-ups. How exciting. Such an incredible athlete. You can see she absorbed the landing. We talked at the top of the show about Maddie Carr and what she brings to this team at Denver. Currently third in the NCAA and wants to challenge for an NCAA title this year. There's a really nice combination to open this routine. A giant fall with a full pirouette into a ginger. It's a release move, fly away with a half twist. Setting up the dismount. Looking for the landing. Double layout. Gets wow. it. Notice how high her chest is as she just drops it in like a dart. Fantastic performance. And Denver has three, four now. Solid routines. But look at this. The score is in for Olivia Troutman. Three perfect tens in her career. The second one on ball. And two weeks in a row. Blue Ball said he hopes someday that every single ball turn his lineup is just going to be money because they can all do that. Speaking of scoring perfect tens, here is Maggie Nichols. She is very comfortable with the perfect ten at 21 in her incredible she career. Is uncanny with these landings. <laughs> <laughs> what are they going to do with that? Oh my goodness. Okay, I just. <laughs> she. Her stickability yeah. is unreal, unreal because it does not have to be absolutely perfectly in the same position every time. She will find that landing every single time. You can watch all the little adjustments in the ankles, the knees, 
her quadriceps, everything works together to finesse and not lose those feet. There is Oklahoma's head coach, K.J. Kindler, in her 14th season. She knows the Sooners off to a great start here today at home on leap day. And uh, we'll wait for the score for Maggie Nichols as Natalie Morton will be the anchor performer for Denver on the bar as Maddie Carr had a 9.95. And Natalie stepped in last week for the first time under immense pressure after teammate Maddie Carr had fallen right before and she came up with a clutch routine. Doing the same here, working hard throughout the whole routine. Few little form issues, but way to go. Two weeks in a row, step into the lineup. Lena Skavica, who is responsible for their good work on the bars, a former NCAA champion on the high bar himself. She had a little bit of form issues throughout, but not here. Look at that, right on top of the bar, perfectly straight. Into the single bar release and the dismount, little leg separation, but brings them back together for the landing. It's a little hop. Women's College Gymnastics is brought to you by Miralax. It works with the water in your body to unblock your system naturally. And pedigree, pedigree, feed the good. First rotation from Norman, Oklahoma complete. We'll give you the scores and the running scores as we come back in a moment. Huge defining moment for Denver last year, but this year is a little bit different. They got off to an incredible start, but in the last couple of weeks, they have lost, of course, as we mentioned, Lindsey Brown and Mia Sundstrom. Eight underclassmen competing today, which means 80% of the routines you're seeing today for Denver are from underclassmen, and they're doing a good job. They absolutely are. Uh, no doubt that this was a big blow to this team, losing two in the lineup on every single event. And look at this. I mean, her accolades are unbelievable. Lindsey Brown was a co-champion on the floor last year, but this final one competed in all around in every meet the last two seasons. That's hard to replace. That's all four events. So two people now have to step into lineups across the board. And they have some time to do it because they started the season so well. Lindsey Brown out with an Achilles injury and Mia Sundstrom out with an elbow injury. So we move to vault now for the visiting Denver Pioneers, AK Subject. We'll have the leadoff spot and you see the six athletes to go for Denver on this second of four rotations. And they were such a Cinderella team last year. This is the year they can really show their resilience and what they're made of. Your Chinko full. <laughs> <laughs> I love the You're facial kidding. expression. <laughs> <laughs> that was pure joy. It looked like it even surprised her. It was. No movement on the on the landing. She was a little bit under rotated, slightly low chest on the landing. But so nice to see her feet stick on the mat. Notice how deep her knees bent on that. That will be a slight deduction, but. Her. her season high at 9775 so far this year as a freshman she's been contributing on vault bars and floor here is olivia troutman let's see what she can do after that spectacular start on the vault and this is another outstanding event for oklahoma they really have no weaknesses but this is a big beautiful event watch the oh she mm. low, had to fight wow. struggled on that past handstand pirouette on low bar Saved it, but they will have to take a little deduction there. And a double layout, little hop on the landing. I think it took the wind out of her sails, almost missing that handstand on low bar. And couldn't quite hold the concentration through to the end to get that stick. It's interesting, she really likes the lead off position. We thought she might lead off and vault, but she loved leading off on the other apparatus. She said after she warms up, she wants to go. Yeah. At least a little bit early on that release point in the double layup. Didn't quite get her feet up first. Alexandria Ruiz next up for Denver. By the way, AK subject had a 9-8. Interesting your Chinko. Mm. Clean landing too. Feet together. I like when the athletes can land with the feet a little bit closer together or at least pull their heels together as they show off the stick. These aren't 
big vault in terms of height. Notice her head was below the level of the table as she finished, but you're right, it was clean, just a little tight in the air. Carrie Thomas, the junior from Coral Springs, Florida, now for the Sooners. Thomas is uh, really specialized in just a couple events for the Sooners. Usually she's in the beam lineup consistently and sometimes bottom. Nice Tawan Blind, a little bit late on the pirouette. The single bar release was a straddle Jaeger. Really glues those feet together, especially on those transitions. It's very easy to lose that form. She maintains it throughout. Double layout dismount. Oh, oh. almost had the stick and then had to take that step. She missed the first four meets of the season with a stress reaction in her back. So watch this Tawan Blind. They really need to finish the pirouette. Pretty good. She was close to vertical. Like that she keeps those toes pointed throughout the release move. And the dismount, she was just a little under rotated, so her chest was forward and couldn't quite keep that balance to not take the step. Her season high was a 9.95. Victoria Fitz now, the freshman up for Denver after Alexandria Ruiz had a 9.85. Nice comeback from last week. She missed the ball, got it this week. She had good distance from the table. The judges are sitting right by the side so they can really see if the block takes the ball up and out. Coaching staff really excited to see these young gymnasts stepping forward. You mentioned she always in the lineup in vault only once, had a 9-1-2-5 last week. But this is exactly what they're hoping this team will do after the injuries to some of their stars is step up and contribute in a big way. It's nice to see the big improvement in one week's time. Anastasia Webb. Now there's a skill in this routine that she does higher than anyone in the country. It's a pack salto down to the low bar. Right here, that is just <laughs> gorgeous. It looks fun. Nice transition with a half turn up to high bar. Beautiful form and execution. That's exactly how you do that skill. Oh, double front with a half. I wish you could have gotten the stick on the landing because the routine was outstanding. Four times this year, she scored 9-9 nine, nine on bar. She's currently fourth in the all-around in the NCAA rankings. Watch this. She times the release so perfectly, and she's so bold to take it that high and catches the low bar with straight arms in perfect position. Back to Denver on the vault. By the way, the first three vaulters all have career highs because they haven't had many opportunities to vault. So here comes Emily Glynn after Victoria Fitz had a 9825. Here's a look at a Supahara vault. She won't do the round up onto the board. Supahara laid out with a full. Oh, a bit of a pogo stick landing. But that is such a difficult vault and difficult to do well. Technically, it's hard. Our NBA Sunday specials comes to you from the Big Easy with LeBron and the West. Jade Dagovea gets the call for the Sooners. She's fourth up on bars. Score for Anastasia Webb is now in 9875. Kerry Thomas had a 9875, and Olivia Troutman led them off with a 9775. And a great lineup on an event is one that builds momentum. This one does. Very nice execution on that Pike Jaeger. Yes, she keeps those legs glued together. Even on the pack salto down to low bar, very difficult to do that. It's amazing to think this is a new event that she added to the repertoire this year. Ooh. Love that full out, but oh, they can't get landings. They cannot buy a stuck landing here on bars for some reason. She had a labral tear last year in her shoulder, which kept her out of the lineup, but this year she has been superb. Oh. Currently tied for fifth in the country on this event in the NCAA. She is money because she doesn't give anything away throughout the routine on form. Maddie Carr, the senior all-arounder, having a superb year for Denver. You see the scores there. All between 9-8 and 9-8-5. Not bad, and big vaults coming up now. And she has scored a 10 on this vault. One and a half twist. Oh, 
extremely wow. clean and interesting technique on that. You can really see the fall. And then she snaps that final half twist around. She's so well oriented in the air. Her spatial awareness is so good. Nice block up, lift off the table. And she's able to get the heels together as she stands up for the salute. <laughs> What's amazing is she's been in the all-around in every meet of her career for Denver. I mean, just think of the athletic ability and the resiliency of this young lady from Stillwater, Minnesota. Maddie Carr, what a senior season she is having. Reagan Smith on the bars for the Sooners coming after Jade Dagovea gets a 9-9. And the score is now in for Maddie Carr. It's a perfect 10. The second one today on the ball in this competition. Reagan Smith hit a great routine. Not quite as special as she hit last weekend, but another really solid routine for Oklahoma. Love that skill, that stalled her into the reverse hack, so unique, much more difficult than some of the other release moves. This may be the first time they haven't stuck one landing yet, really, on bars. Interesting development just now, Kathy, that Denver has five really good hit routines, and that last one being a perfect 10, the third one of her career on vault for Maddie Carr. And as we noted, they are lacking depth, and they're hoping just to limp through to the postseason. And so they've elected to not put up their six ball. So they have five great scores, and that's what they're going to go with. And you just need to count your best five. So Amori Lockhart will not vault, and we'll go back to the uneven bars. Reagan Smith's score is coming in now. It's a 9.9. .9. So the Sooners uncharacteristically Missing those landings on vault. And even though they have a six tenths of a point lead coming into the second rotation, uh, the Sooners looking strong, and that brings up Maggie Nichols. And watch her opening sequence. It's so amazing. A big ray, it's the single bar release right off the top, out of the toe on. Huge and right to the back, Salto down to the end. She goes out of it to the tongue. This is an extraordinary combination of gymnastics that is just beautifully put together. Double layout. Oh, there's your landing. There's your landing. And feet together. And that's that's got to be I your 10 it. today. I didn't see any form breaks in that, Kathy. No, and, and even more than that, the level of difficulty in this routine. So she has it all. Big height. Two feet, wow. and look at the toes, completely pointed, arms completely stretched out on the regress, perfect position on the pack salto, and the dismount, she is money, just cashes it in on these landings. Currently ranked number one in the nation on this event with an average of 9.96. We will wait for her score. The great crowd on hand on this Saturday morning in Norman, Oklahoma. And they are all watching, of course, one of the young ladies who will go down as one of the greatest Sooners in gymnastics history with 21 perfect tens, two NCAA championships. And she is hoping to lead her team this year to their fifth NCAA team championship. It looks like the score is in, and it looks like it'll be a 9.95, but the perfect 10 in the rotation came from Maddie Carr from Denver. What a thrill for the visiting pioneers. We go back to beam for the Sooners. Jenna Dunn rewarded for finally sticking at this mount. A 9.925 in front of a home crowd and lots of family and friends in the house to cheer her on. Here is Carly Woodard, the junior from Overland Park. Kansas. This is her event where she specializes. Well, that was a special mount, kind of nifty to mount up onto the knee. And she's the type of gymnast that actually uses anger on beam. Doesn't work for everybody, but it fuels her because she is a fiery competitor and likes that feeling of intensity. Watch the side aerial to back handspring. Difficult combination. She's 
been in all nine meets for the Sooners. 995 is her season high. Here's her kick over front to a beat jump. It's interesting, she does that more like a, almost like a tucked aerial because she lands one foot before the other. Most of land right on both feet. A little soft in the knee on the, on the first leap, that back leg, sometimes it's hard to remember it's back there to really lock it out. Beautiful flexibility, nice chest up high on that needle scale. Solid routine aerial. Cartwheel oh. to a full. There's the stick. Expect a big score for that one. That was clean. So they couldn't quite find those landings on bars, but they are finding stuck landings here. Love this aerial cartwheel to the back handspring. She needs to lock those legs out. Another side aerial to the full twist. Good control. There's a few athletes competing in the all-around today. As you can see, Maddie Carr surely didn't hurt to get a perfect 10. She's leading the all-around. Anastasia Webb and Alexandra Ruiz also contesting. And this is Ruiz, the sophomore. She has been credited as one of the unsung heroes after the number of injuries that this team has suffered. And she's really stepped up. Tokens with the double tuck. Nice height above the floor. Switch side to a half open. Nice job keeping your toes pointed on the second jump. She competed in the all around in 12 of 15 meets last season. One and a half to front layout. Beautiful smile right before the final tumbling run. Another double back in pike position. A little stiff legged, but she managed to no movement on the feet as she went to the lunge. Good for her. One thing to note here when you watch these performances by Denver, if they were to just perform them more fully, a little bit bigger, when you see Oklahoma take the floor, you'll see what I'm talking about. It's really all they need to do, and that comes from confidence and really just expressing themselves in a much bigger, more theatrical way. Really nice, just a little stiff-legged on that final landing. Once again, as we noted, Denver competing 80% of the routines coming from underclassmen. So that is perhaps an attitude that they will mature into, that type of presentation. Here is Reagan Smith coming after Carly Woodard. Got the second 9-9-2-5 in a row for the Sooners on the beam. Do you see what I mean by the unique choreography and the, the elements, not just in the skills that Oklahoma uses on beam. Reagan is such a natural balance beam worker. Her training is so good. That handspring layout step out, very soft on that landing. Soft in the good way where it's absorbed and looks effortless. Very nice job. Oh, I love the straddle position in her jump is as good as it gets. Just so, wow, what a great mm. combination. Difficulty that surpasses many of the other routines that we see around the country and yet done so exquisitely well. Oh, oh little bubble on finesse. a full turn of all things. Oof. Is an alter to 2016 Olympic team. Nice lift on that gainer full off the side. That is an extraordinary beam routine. Yes, there was a little flaw in there on the full turn. Just a tiny mistake there. 
But that's that's a great routine. Reach up now. Watch this. Straddle half and goes right into the back handspring swing down. Love it. Certainly a fan favorite, Reagan Smith. She had hoped to train for the 2020 Olympics, and then she just decided to call it. So last May, she called KJ Kindler and said, I want to come to college, and it's great to see that she is thriving as a freshman here for the Sooners. Back to Denver on the floor. Amori Lockhart coming up. 9-8-7-5 was Alexandra, Alexandria Ruiz's score. Amplitude on the front top. Good position on that Shenojete. Positioned in the air nicely at the top. Really a unique combination of power and flexibility. And double pie. Oh, over rotated. fun <laughs> choreography <laughs> oh the more confident she gets with this performance it's going to just grow and grow throughout the rest of the season flow routines a minute and a half and she felt like i want more i want to be out here longer i'm yeah. still i'm still going after it look at the full split maintains the toe point throughout got to be a little careful on those landings you want to bring the feet all the way together at the end of those leaps and jumps and just pulled around a little too much so her hips were behind her feet and had to stumble backwards. It's a couple of notes there from Jimmy Pratt, the assistant coach at Denver. Anastasia Webb, you see her ranking in the NCAA on the beam. She's coming after Reagan Smith got a 9-9. As many gymnasts are, Anastasia really strives for perfection. And that's a delicate balance you have to find between trying to be perfect and yet striving just for excellence each day and there's that <laughs> fine line in there macro series hands from layout step out interesting technique she keeps her feet together legs together longer and then steps out A little bit of a hesitation going into that split jump. I think they'll give her credit, certainly, for the connection. She kept those arms moving. Oh, a little bit of a cover there. Uh, switch lead, split lead. Twice this year, she scored 9.95 on beam. To a full twist. Great job keeping that landing, maintaining the stick. Good for her. So far this season, she's hit 38 of 39 routines for the Sooners. One minor stumble on floor a few weeks back, but otherwise, she has been really reliable. And it's just little tiny things that she can improve, just really maintaining the, a complete toe point, especially if you're going to have tape on your foot because it draws the attention to it, but so close. Ashley Kerr giving her a couple of notes. Maddie Carr up now for Denver coming after Amori Lockhart head in nine and a seven two five. Carr's scores today so far, vault 10, fires nine nine five. This is a first look at a front double twist. It's an E-pass. Very well done, nice 
control on the landing. That shinny into the wolf jump full. position in that split and again in the wolf jump position. One and a half to front ball. Very difficult pa combination pass for a lot of bonus when you twist both of those elements. She made really good use of this wolf turn, but she does it right here out of a turn, kind of like a half shimmy into that wolf position where it continues to turn in the air. Very unique. In the back one and a half, and then twist the second element as well. A lot of bonus points in that pass. Coming into this meet, the senior, 110 scores in her career, 9-9 nine, nine or better. She is literally a rock star for Denver. Back to the beam now. Anastasia Webb score is in. It's a 995. And here is the incomparable Maggie Nichols. She really has it all. And it and it's all on display here on Balance Beams. She's got the skill. She's gonna change this routine around. So toss to the back hands. So we swing down well down. You really have to keep those arms moving to get the connection. AJ Kindler told us the other day they changed that and added that combination because the back handspring layout was actually hurting her knee. And isn't it nice to have that bag of tricks where you can just choose which to do and do well. Nice, really good positions on those leaps. They pay close attention to detail, just like Anastasia before her. Everything is so near perfect, if not absolute perfection. Nine, nine or better for Nichols would give OU a season high on this event. And her specialty, finding these landings. Oh! Look at that, she's not gonna move those feet. It doesn't <laughs> matter what happens, she is not gonna move those feet. That's just brilliant athleticism. Yes. Besides all the artistry and acrobatics, is. she is just an incredible athlete. See how beautiful that is? Just the little toe right up at the top on the front foot. He's, that's being picky, super, super picky. And the judges may not even see it in real time. But when you're this good and you're Maggie, she goes for perfection and they keep working on all of those little tiny details. 10. Oh, in her career 21 times last week, just about 10 days ago, she sprained her ankle, and yet she's performing at this you incredible know. level. You would never know. Here's Emma Brown, another freshman. Maddie Carr had a 9925 for her floor effort. said great teams when they face adversity they find a way and to see the big improvement from last week to this this will be a big success for Denver switch room very difficult first lead to hit that position
finishes with a Rudy. That's a front run and a half twist. Lovely ending pose. Nice to see her show off her flexibility. And nice straight legs. So the opening pass was a double back. A little bit rush on the lift, which is why she landed with her chest down a little bit. And the Rudy one and a half twist. Good control on the landing. Again, chest was just a little bit down. And there is Maggie Nichols. Her score is in. It's a 9.975. So a 49.675 for the Sooners on beam is a new season high for Oklahoma. They have the lead as we move to the fourth and final rotation from Norman, Oklahoma today on ESPN. Fantastic day here in Norman, Oklahoma as we get set for the fourth and final rotation. Quick update on the meet summary. The Sooners have led all the way. They started with a six-tenth of a point lead after the first rotation. And after the third rotation, they have extended that lead to 1.175 after a season high 49.675 on the balance beam. So at home with a comfortable lead, the Sooners move to the floor. And it'll be interesting to see who gets the call to compete because as we said at the top of the show, we weren't sure if we were going to see Maggie Nichols in one, two, three of four or four events today, depending on her sprained ankle and how she's recovering, but she warmed up on floor just now, Kathy. Well, you said we weren't sure. Just <laughs> knowing Maggie and watching her, I, like, I know she wants to be out there on floor exercise, so we'll see. Looks like they've put her fourth up in the lineup for the Sooners. We just got that verification. So she'll be in the all-around today going head-to-head -head with Maddie Carr and these Two, of course, contending for an NCAA all-around title. This is exciting. This is Emma Brown for Denver in that leadoff spot. The freshman from Iowa did her club training at Chow's Gymnastics. And kudos to Denver having a great meet under very difficult, challenging circumstances with two of their best gymnasts out of the lineup. And true champions are those who are at their best when things are at their worst, and they are coming through. And is doing a terrific job in this leadoff spot. Very solid. Nice and relaxed. Smiled throughout. Gets oh, the stick. Great. Really well done. Five times in the lineup this year for Denver. Three times. She scored 9.85. This is an event where they're ranked fifth nationally, so a very respectable ranking there as we get set to go back for the Sooners on floor. Kathy, let's talk about some of the points of emphasis for the judges. Well, it's all about difficulty. Those big skills in both the tumbling and the dance, and then artistry, that's the flexibility, precise footwork, perfect form and posture, and those landings, of course, upright, controlled, and without big steps, hops, or slides. Jordan, the junior from Bedford, Texas, she's been very reliable on this event. All scores between 9.825 and 9.875 this season. And I think they plug the floor mat in here at Oklahoma. They just <laughs> light up the place with these routines. Unique choreography, great music, <laughs> and a really nice landing to open this routine up with. Again, showing more difficulty by twisting both of those elements. See the full commitment and full energy in the dance. with a with back half. Rudy, really a lot of difficulty in her tumbling and boom. 
light on the line with that hand. I couldn't tell if the fingers went over. It's a good thing she trimmed her nails because they might have been over that <laughs> mat. Good lift on the pike double back. And these combination paths really give her so much bonus. That whip back with a half twist for Rudy. A lot of connection bonus in that routine. Eight tenths, I think. Here's the all-around update. As we noted, Maggie Nichols has been inserted in the lineup for the Sooners. And look at she and Maddie Carr separated in this all-around today by .025. This is thrilling. We go back to the beam for Denver, Alexandria Ruiz. She opens with her leap series. It's a hitch kick, straight legs into a switch side. She's really done her part for Denver today. Two 9.85s and a 9.875. A very respectable all around standing at this point. Hands from the lad, step back. a very pretty dainty style in her dance nice details with the hands and a gainer pike off the end another solid routine made a good point kathy denver's really doing a nice job obviously the sooners are the number one team in the country and they undefeated this year they're rolling along but after the disappointments of those injuries denver seems to have their head up and they're doing clean quality gymnastics absolutely it'll be interesting to see if they give her that connection bonus where she combined the acro skill with the split jump she landed with her chest down and had to pause pretty long between the two Jade Degovea set to go for the Sooners. Jordan Draper led them off with a season high 9-9 for her. And this routine is so captivating. Front layout, front double twist. a good sense of the music and the movement together again two twisting elements of great difficulty <laughs> strong routine when a gymnast can move the air around her with the arm movement it just elevates the performance to a whole different level front layout now this is a very difficult front double twist and e skill Shows off those positions. Knees get a little bit soft, but then she locks them back out at the top of the jump. A very vocal leader as she's getting a couple of nuggets there from Tom Haley, who is partly responsible for that work on floor and the conditioning of this team. She is having her best year ever, Jade Degovea. Back to being now Amori Lockhart. Be interesting to see her use her qualities, her power, and her flexibility on this event. Nice high kick. This is always a big floaty layout, layout. 
even shows the flexibility midair in those layout step outs. Typically a big contributor for the team on beam and floor this year, but last week stepped up to do the all around for the first time this season, had a 36 7 2 5. Little shy of the split on both of those leaps, and it, it is a requirement. You really have to hit the 180 degrees. It's a special requirement on beam. Nice dismount. Back handspring to the gainer, full hop back. There's some very good pieces in that routine. And with more experience, it's, it's just gonna get better and better. Denver has two 9825s. Emma LaPinta set to go now. Jay Begovea, a 9925, a season high for her. So the first two scores for the Sooners on the floor. The Sooners comfortably in the lead. The first two scores are 9-9 nine -nine and 9-9-2-5. Nine -nine you see another big E skill right off the bat here. It's a triple twist. Very few people do this in college gymnastics. Get on that second jump, you need to get both legs equally high. Big lunge out of that tuck double back. What a fun, flirty <laughs> routine and music. In eight of the nine meets for the Sooners so far on floor, three times she scored 9-9, nine -nine, the sophomore from Crisco, Texas. So really difficult, three twists here. She loses her form just a little, legs cross. Gets it pretty much all the way around. Very difficult element. We'll go back to floor for the visiting Denver Pioneers. Amori Lockhart had a 985. Excuse me, Denver on beam. That 985 for her is a career high, and that brings up Callie Schlotten, the freshman from Minnesota. Been in the beam lineup only once this season. Had a 9.85 last week. Oh, oh, oh. oh. Mm. So the ball is five tenths of a point. Which they not quite perfect in those positions in the air. Just a little soft in the knees. Scores coming into this performance. Two 9.825s and a 9.85. So, very respectable scores for Denver on being here so far. Keep in mind, you can drop the, the one low score. They had a fall on bars earlier tonight, but they were able to cover that up. They had five solid scores. And dismount. Handspring gainer full, just a step salute. Really need to show the stick first and then step and salute the judge. Maggie Nichols, who is getting set to go. We weren't sure, we said at the top of the show, how many events she would do, but she hates to be on the sidelines. She tells KJ Kindler, put me in coach, 21 career perfect tens. She, along with people like Kyla Ross from UCLA, chasing that perfect 10 record, which is 28. And it's not just to do it for herself. This is truly, she wants to do this for her team and the fans as well. And she has options. She can do a two pass floor routine or a three pass routine.
Eva. I love that right into Treasure Tag. That was the combination where she sprained her ankle last week from that one and a half to the front layout. Comes back with a tight double back. Beautiful form in the air. position in the leaps. Folks, we're looking at wow. a young lady who will likely go down as one of the greatest OU women gymnasts of all time, senior Maggie Nichols. And she's not just beautiful in her gymnastics, she is tough. The resiliency of this athlete, everyone knows her story in International Elite Gymnastics. She has just changed the face of collegiate gymnastics and brought so much joy for so many people. Look at the beautiful position. So Maggie does the big things well and the little things well. She's become an icon on campus here at Oklahoma. When she walks by, other students go, hey, there goes Maggie Nichols. Not unlike they would do for a starting quarterback like Kyler Murray or someone. No, and it's well-deserved. Here's Maddie Carr. Callie Schlottman had that 9-2-2-5, so they need two hits here to get a good beam score. Side aerial to back handspring, very solid. See how deliberate she is in her movement. Really aggressive, the hitch kick to side somersault. Not totally sure the knee. The legs were supposed to, I think the legs were supposed to be straight. Usually they are on that side somersault. Talk about her all around performance today. 10 on vault, 995 on bars, 99925 on floor. Oh. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> okay, almost got the <laughs> stick. Tried to put that foot back down. That was a that's a tough routine. Your your the reset routine had a fall in the previous one. And she has some difficulty in here. The side aerial to the back handspring. Difficult acro pass. And finished strong. Wanted this stick so badly, but just could not get the weight back onto that left foot. She's one of two all-around gymnasts in the NCAA in the top 10 in all four events. The other one being, of course, UCLA's Kyla Ross. So Maddie Carr with hopes of competing for an NCAA all-around title. Very impressive on beam. Here is Anastasia Webb. The score in for Maggie Nichols, 9925. What has been wonderful about Anastasia when Maggie is out of the lineup with that spring ankle, she steps up as the anchor on both beam and floor and the leader that they all need her to be. And she's spectacular here. She's been in the all-around in every single meet for Oklahoma this year. Front double pull, nice lift. second somersault than she usually is. with a Rudy. I love the energy behind the choreography and that every little piece 
of the routine. Nothing is overlooked. Nothing is too small to not give it full attention. It's those little things that just make routines special. And floor exercising in college gymnastics is really exciting the last few years. And the routines are just stepping up to be something quite special and really demands our attention. The junior from Morton Grove, Illinois, who happens to be fluent in Greek, went to the same high school I did, Niles West High School. Alexis Vasquez coming after Maddie Carr's 985, Kathy. And this is a special routine from start to finish. Her unique qualities, her flexibility, her uncanny ability to balance, move fluidly on balance beam, difficult combinations like that front aerial to the back hands from the layout. And she does extraordinary work in her leaps and in her, her turns, very difficult. Look at that, perfect split, both leaps. There's no question that the legs are straight or the toes are pointed. Twice this year, she scored perfect 10 on this event. Watch this turn. You only have to do a full turn. It's a requirement, but she lifts her leg all the way up. Gorgeous season. This is truly blimp worthy. <laughs> it's a fabulous oh, routine. And if that is not near perfection, I don't know what is. There are no built in deductions, meaning she doesn't have soft knees. They are straight through and through. Perfect split in the air and the arm positions. It's not just the legs. And from start to finish, the focus that it takes to just be so on on every single element. Nice to Alexis see. Alexis Vasquez, she shared her story on social media in December about her battle with depression and anxiety, and she's been a huge inspiration for young girls all around it's the country. It's a beautiful Kathy. gift to everyone. She put it out there for everyone who also struggles with that perfectionist element. Reagan Smith, you see the scores so far for the Sooners on floor. That 198-425, regardless of Reagan Smith, it could even go up. That's the highest score in 2020 in the NCAA this year. This is not easy choreography, and she is so in the pocket with the music. Hitting not just the obvious beats, but the little in-between beats as well. Great. Coach Kindler said it was just a couple of weeks ago where the light came on, and all of a sudden, she has been shining. Little forward on a tight double back. One slight under rotation. The rest was so much fun. Great choreography and really difficult choreography to get with the music. Open with tuck double back. And three Sooners in the all around today. Reagan Smith, Anastasia Webb, and Maggie Nichols. What an effort for the number one team in the country. We will wrap this one up when we come back to Norman. Women's College Gymnastics is brought to you by Pedigree. Pedigree, feed the good. By the way, today Maggie Nichols had a 39-825 to win the all-around. And the Oklahoma Sooners with a score of 198-45.